Hi, welcome to day 17. I think I figured out what the cause of my sickness was a few days ago, and I think it was the hyphy mud. My main problem was my stomach was very acidic, and so I wasn't ever hungry, and I was you know, just not feeling good at all. So I'm feeling relatively normal now, which is good. I'm keen to make up for those two sessions that weren't quite as great. I'm feeling fresh after our first ice bath. I'm very interested to see if my forearm has if that stiffness has been alleviated by that ice bath. Anyway, we're taking good old lock and load. A safe bet is gonna give me a good workout. So I'm happy we're sticking with this. Yeah, it's a good, good pre-workout. Tastes pretty good and my stomach feels great. I started this workout doing a Zarian on level five. My goal is to do level six for five reps. This slams those tendons especially when you do it up first, just after you've warmed up. Since we're doing perfect form, and I was really struggling with the form on this last rep, I cut it off at just three reps. I trained the planche early in the session while I was fresh in order to do a more advanced variation. You'll notice I'm focused on keeping my body shape at 135 degrees throughout the whole movement. I don't want my body shape to deviate from that angle at all. The main goal is to get my butt level with my shoulders, so I'm actually in a planche position. Thanks again to Craig for this one. Check out day 15 where he showed us the progressions for planche. He trained this skill in addition to the planche negatives. Unfortunately, I couldn't maintain the 135 degree angle throughout the exercise, and as such, I brought it back down to 9 degrees for the remaining sets. I was very happy with these reverse muscle ups. They were quite explosive in order to preserve my strength. Most importantly, they were very clean. If I can do two reps of the reverse muscle up, which is the hardest part of the elevator, I should have no problems doing a single elevator. I'm now doing the second half of the elevator to bring my elevator full circle. Watching my day eight, I realized I wasn't going very deep, probably only to 90 degrees. Again, I wasn't fully aware of this until I saw the replay of my set. So this time, I'm really focusing on getting really deep into that shoulder stand position since that's the top of the reverse muscle up and connecting these two skills will give me the elevator. As Tyson's suggestion, I'm going to start my last set in the shoulder stand and then that'll be one rep, two reps. That way, it's exactly the end of a reverse muscle up. I feel like I have a bit more power if I start in the handstand. I think that's because that whole time that shoulder's retracted I'm going to make it a little harder for my last set, starting that shoulder stand and see if I can get two good reps. I don't know what it is, but I feel like I'm like this and I need to be... What do you think it is, man? Maybe because it's a relaxed position. You might be relaxing in it. That's the exact reason why I can't do a reverse muscle up. Because in that... Coming from there, I struggle. So there you go. Still got some work to do. I'm going to try my next set to go from a fresh shoulder stand to handstand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Come on, Come on. one more of that. Let me say the number. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh my Last one. This is it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh no, he's falling a little bit quicker than that end there. Damn it. This wasn't quite high enough with the hand placement. They should have been in line with my hips. Because of this, I reduced it to level two for the other sets. Damn it, not good enough. Ah, 
second one was a little bit too fast there. I'm expecting to weigh a little bit less than I did before, mainly because of those four or five days where I felt sick and I wasn't eating properly. I was at 76.5 last time. I'm now at 74.6. Uh, anyway, as expected, I've lost two kilos. That wouldn't obviously be muscle. Yeah, it would. I don't think so. I think it's... I still haven't been eating as much as I had before, so I think it's still like to do with my stomach. We'll see on Friday. I'll weigh myself again and I expect to be around the same level as before. I'm feeling really strong today anyway, so that's what I'm, I'm really happy about, you know, those one arms felt good and the something else felt good, I forget. <laughs> Hi, I'm just tucking into my post-workout meal. Hitting those macros, haven't hit those macros in a few days now, so just getting back up to level, which is good. My appetite's returning to normal. To reiterate, it was the hyphy mud that made me sick. It stuffed up the acidic balance of my stomach. It was just way more acidic than it should have been. And because of that, everything I ate just didn't feel good. My stomach never felt comfortable. I didn't get, I wasn't hungry. How do you think Kylie Muscle would feel about that? It's not for everybody, yeah. I reckon he'd call you a pussy. Now, onto the ice bath. We're gonna be taking that shortly, which we're not looking forward to. We never look forward to it. However, you may remember we mentioned we were interested to see if it helps this forearm pain. And what do you know, today my forearm was feeling a lot better. I could still feel a little bit of tightness, but it was far reduced from my last session. So I think that's pretty good evidence that the ice bath is actually a good thing to get rid of any sort of muscle strain or real tightness that you might have. I think that's because it just, when you get in that bath, it's so uncomfortable, which I think is what makes it so good. And it just, it makes everything seize up as much as it possibly can to try and keep you warm. So then when you get out, it slowly relaxes back to its normal size. So I think it really helps. Um, I think that's a good way to recover. So we're gonna be doing it two more times. I also imagine it should get more and more bearable in that the more you do something, the more used to it you get. I timed it, I think it was 28 minutes between getting out of the bath and I had a shower after a warm shower. And even then, 28 minutes afterwards when I finally was back to a normal state of my jaw wasn't shattering, I wasn't feeling cold and weird, I just sort of felt quite normal. I'm interested to see if that 28 minute window goes down to 20 minutes or less as I'm getting more accustomed to this. Also, one other thing to note about it is it wasn't as bad as I had in my mind. It's particularly when I was feeling sick, I just didn't want to do it, but it wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. So this is the worst. Why would you ever want to get into a bath that has those ice floating in it? And this sound is going to be one of the worst sounds ever. <laughs> uh, that damn sound, man! Oh dear! Ice bath number two. I've got this little injury from gymnastics, very minor. Just I bang my toe on the bar. So this would be perfect for that. And I'm going to try and make this look comfortable. That's my goal today. Alright, so... Ah! Alrighty! Here we go! Jumping lad! Oh! Beautiful! Beauty! What the? You're not even hyperventilating. Nothing like a nice warm bath. Oh yeah. Compare this to on Monday. Yeah, it's not comfortable at all. I'm just hiding it better. Oh really? Yeah. <laughs> it's starting to suck. Well, you're already one minute in. Uh, it's so starting it's gonna, to sting a little bit. It's going to start to get comfortable. No, it's starting to hurt a bit more. No! Obviously, I was much better at controlling the hyperventilating today. And I guess that's because I've been more accustomed to being dumped in freezing water. Oh. I'm handling it a lot better the second time around, which is good to note. I'm actually feeling a nice sort of warm sensation around my body. My fingers and toes are hurting. My traps were hurting a little bit, but that's gone away. And now my, yeah, my body is just feeling strangely warm. The extremities are, uh, are hurting, that's for sure. I'm just getting a few jitters now through the hips. They're shaking a little bit. 
You look so comfortable though. Like you know, it doesn't even look like you're cold, man. <sighs> Tell me a bedtime story. I Comfy man, yeah. <laughs> Come join me, ladies. So, <laughs> so ice baths aren't that bad, everyone. It's as easy as sitting in an uncomfortable place. If you've got a good willpower, you can do one for ten minutes. It's going to be really uncomfortable, but you can do it. And then, if you do it two days later, much easier. I'm really interested to see how we find Friday because that'll be the third one. Is it going to be like a walk in the park? So far, this seems like it's similar to the contrast shower in that the first time you go from that hot to cold is just awful but you know two or three days out of doing that you become desensitized to that cold is that 10 minutes yeah. oh already i'm enjoying this nice steaming beautiful summer's day oh, oh winter's night hot bath yeah hurry up man so i gotta get the train oh it still feels weird I can barely feel my fingers and everything. <laughs> oh, I got... <sighs> okay. Again, I get a tingle down my whole wrist and in my hand when I try to put that weight on it to get out. The jaw is now starting to chatter again. And the traps are really always trying to creep up and tighten up. And I think that's just to warm me up. So to summarise, I think that was more pleasant than the first one. I think I'm better at regulating my own body temperature. I'm starting to shake now. We'll note what time it is and I'll check how long it takes me to get back to normal. Last time it took me about 28 minutes with a hot shower. But all in all, that was easier than the first one. Today, for our during workout, we are taking GNC lock and load. 